So I'm five years old, sitting on our living room floor, watching TV on a Saturday morning, blissfully unaware that a piece of misinformation was about to change my life. See, in 1987, I really didn't have much of a choice of what to watch on TV. Oh, sure, I had my limited selection of channels, but they chose what was on. And they would include ad breaks in everything. They would even edit content to fit the ads in. So if you were watching a movie in 1987, there'd probably be about 20 minutes of the movie that had been cut out so that it can fit into a two-hour time slot with ads. The movie that I was watching was called The Incredible Journey. It's a story about three pets who get lost in the wilderness and they just need to find their way home. And in the story, there's a moment where a dog comes across a porcupine. Now, the kind of edited for content scene played out like this. Dog sees porcupine from about 15 feet away. Dog barks at the porcupine. Porcupine turns its back to the dog. Then there's this kind of awkward cut and all of a sudden now the dog has a face full of porcupine quills. I mean, I just sort of assumed that the porcupine had shot the dog with its quills. <laughs> what else did I have to go on? So I'm 18 years old, gloriously frosted tips and a copy of Big Rex in loving memory of in my discman. One day a friend of mine who considered me their smart friend mentions that they came across a porcupine when walking their dog. I quickly said, you need to watch out, otherwise they'll shoot their quills at you. What, um, what followed was easily 10 of the most awkward, silent seconds I've ever experienced in my life. Uh, my, my status as their smart friend, done. And this is the power of misinformation. Misinformation is a powerful and dangerous aspect of our lives. And much like the way that our experiences watching TV have changed since my significantly younger and much more hairline forward days, as has the ways that we talk to each other. See, media and technology, they're powerful forces of change to which we are always having to adapt. Consider this. In 1839, an article was written by a man who had just ridden the train for the very first time. He described the experience as the annihilation of space and time. Let that sink in. The annihilation of space and time. Places that had previously been so far away that you would never visit them in your lifetime were suddenly within a day or two's travel. Today, social media has decimated our concept of space taking the entire world and bringing it right to our fingertips. And, if I may say, between smashing through time zones and giving us readily available access to information, if you'll pardon my language, it has done a solid maple syrup of a job on our notions of time. Gone, gone are the days of having to sit around and wait for a news broadcast or hunt through encyclopedias to find information. Today, there's a, an abundance of information, just a simple click away. Finding answers, it's never been faster. But, as, <laughs> as my wife has told me numerous times, um, faster, eh, it's not always better. You see, misinformation, it's also just a simple click away. The cost of that misinformation can be a lot more than losing your status as someone's smart friend. It can cost you your life. See, misinformation has been a major component of the COVID-19 pandemic. The World Health Organization has described it as an infodemic running parallel to the pandemic. Sadly, many people have lost their lives due to following misleading information about treatments or cures for COVID-19. So what can you do? What can any of us do about all this misinformation? See, social media and the non-stop flow of information, it can get overwhelming. But you have more power than you realize. See, social media, it's not, it's not some separate world. You know, you'll often hear people say that, oh, that's online, but this is the real world. Social media isn't some separate place. It's just another way that we talk to each other. And much like a beloved and fellow ginger character from my childhood wished it could be, 
It's part of our world. And you have power in that world. You have the power to stop sharing misinformation. But how? First thing you always need to do is think. Ask yourself, is the source of this information credible? Can it be verified somehow? Then ask, does it even make sense? I mean, does it really make sense that a porcupine shot its quills over a distance of 15 feet? Let's go back to those COVID-19 treatment options for a moment. If there really was a simple cure-all, surely healthcare workers would want you to know about it. It makes no logical sense for the people who have been working day and night for well over a year to have not stopped and been like, oh, by the way, there actually happens to be a simple and effective cure. But the purveyors of misinformation will tell you this is because it is all part of a massively orchestrated global conspiracy. But does that make sense? A global conspiracy involving every nurse, doctor, hospital, healthcare worker, health agency, and government on Earth, all working in perfect harmony to facilitate this conspiracy. Clearly, these people have never worked in public service, because that is what I call a very gloriously optimistic view of project management. You see, misinformation thrives, and I mean it thrives, on being widely shared. The more people who see and share the same thing, the more legitimate it will seem. In communications, we call this the echo chamber. You see, social media can be kind of like a, like a choose your own adventure except with your life. With but a simple click, you choose who you follow. Be it friends, media outlets, a humble public health Twitter account from Ottawa that happens to be the most followed local public health account in North America, etc. In much the same way as you'll gravitate towards the people at a party who are talking about something that interests you, the online adventure that you click your way through will be one that interests you. And we are all interested in people who agree with us. And that, that is the most insidious aspect of misinformation. You will want to believe it if you agree with it. A bad driver does not like to be told that they're a bad driver. And they will happily give a ride to their friend who says they're a good driver. See, we naturally tend to surround ourselves with people who agree with us which makes us believe that misinformation is a problem other people have, but surely not us. Take it from someone who spent 13 years petrified of porcupines. Misinformation affects all of us. Speaking of well thought out segues, let's talk about gluten. Yes, for the small percentage of the population who have celiac disease, Gluten is the enemy, and I'm very happy that they have a wide variety of foods to choose from these days. Curiously, though, going gluten-free is one of the most popular weight loss trends of the last decade, even though there's no evidence to support that whatsoever. Oh, there's anecdotes and articles aplenty. There's correlations and coincidences galore. But evidence? There is not plenty. What often happens is someone will choose to go gluten-free, but then they'll also start eating a more well-balanced diet. They'll start exercising. And sure enough, time will pass and they'll have lost weight. And they'll be like, oh, thank goodness I went gluten-free, not realizing that the source of their weight loss was the other peripheral activities. And this particular trend is very, very deeply rooted. And yes, I just made a pun about food. But that root, that strong root, it comes from us, it comes from our anecdotes of us telling each other and not from evidence. We tell someone, they post about it online, someone shares it, someone shares it, around and around it goes. But it doesn't need to be this way. Much like the physics-defying porcupine quills of my youth, the COVID-19 misinformation, or the magic beans that are gluten. Misinformation will only spread if we allow it to spread. And we cannot start to limit its spread until we admit that it's a problem that affects all of us. Now, that's not an easy admission to make. 
I know. I've been there. But now I'm here. And I have not come here to chastise, maim, blame, shame, or any other verb I can think of that happens to rhyme. I've come here as a bringer of hope, as a bringer of helpful truths. I've come to help you adapt. I've come to help make your clicks matter. I've come to help you think. You see, you can make a difference. I, I can't change my past, but you can change your future by thinking. I mean, granted, if I could change my past, oh, I'd absolutely go back to that living room, back to that young, utterly adorable, but somewhat impressionable five-year-old, and I'd help to ease his mind, help to show him the misinformation for what it was, help him see that there was no reason to be terrified of these porcupines. I would also likely tell him that frosted tips are a genuinely awful idea, and I would help him retain his status as a smart friend in the future. Instead, I hope you'll all think about the information you see online. I hope you'll ask yourself if it makes sense. I hope you'll analyze it as if your own reputation as someone's smart friend was on the line. Think, then click. Thank you.